Hello everyone. In last class, we have discussed the basic of input output transfer and asynchronous data transfer. Today, I will discuss the mode of transfer. The data transfer can be handled in various modes. Some modes are used the CPU as an intermediate path and other transfer that data directly and from the memory unit and this can be handled by the, by following three ways. The first two modes is program input output and interruptible input output modes used as an intermediate path with the help of CPU and direct memory access transfer the data between the computer and external devices and memory units and compute and external devices without supervision of the CPU. So in today's class we have discussed or we will discuss program input output and inter interrupt driven input output. So what is program input output mode? In this mode data transfer that operations are the result in input output instruction which is a part of a computer program. That means as we know that a computer is executing the instruction one by one. When the CPU fetch the instruction register an instruction register is an input output instruction that means there will be a transfer data transfer between the peripheral devices app and computer memory so in programmed input output mode the instruction which is a part of a computer programs each data transfer is initiated by an instruction which is a part of a program normally the data transfer is from CPU registers to peripheral devices. So normally the transfer happens between the CPU registers and peripheral devices and vice versa. So between the CPU registers and peripheral devices or CPU register to peripheral devices and peripheral devices to CPU register. Once the data transfer is initiated, the CPU start monitoring the interface to see when the next transfer can be made. This is the most important part of the program input output mode. That is, during the data transfer, CPU continuously monitor the data transfer between the uh, CPU registers and peripheral devices. The instruction of this program keep close tabs on everything the task take place, the interspace unit and the input output device. So in program input output mode, the CPU is busy for monitoring the data transfer and when the data transfer is occur, CPU can do nothing. So here is a waste of CPU times. This is the flowchart of program input output. Here you can see the CPU read issue command to the input output module. That means CPU instruct at this time CPU fetch the instruction register and it take a input output instruction and it is read issue command CPU read issue command to the input output module. After that the CPU check the status of the input output modules that means the input output module check the current status to the CPU. Then CPU check whether the peripheral devices which are connected to the CPU ready or not. If the peripheral devices is ready, then read word from the input output module. That means CPU read that word from the input output module. This instruction has been sent to the input output module and then write word into the memory. So, here the data transfer happen from the input output module to memory via CPU. You can see here if the input output device is not ready then it is moved to here. That means the 
CPU have to check the status of each output module. When the data transfer is completed or data transfer is done, then the CPU exec, uh, check the program counter for the next instruction. As we know that the program counter store the next address of the next instruction. If the data transfer is not completed, so or not successful, then CPU issue a read issue command to the input output module. So this is how the programmed I/O is work. So what are the drawbacks of programmed I/O? The main drawback of the program initiated I/O was the CPU was monitoring until monitor the units all the time when the program is executing. That means CPU is busy for monitor the program executing. The CPU stay in the program loop until the input output indicate it is ready for data transfer. The next one is this is the time consuming process and the CPU time is wasted. That means as we know that CPU we use CPU for the executing but here the CPU is wasting its time its time for checking the whether the data transfer is completed or not. A lot of keeping eye on the execution of the program. Here the CPU wasting its time for keeping eye to the executing of the program. So how can I solve this problem? To remove this problem an interrupt facility and special command can be used. This entire facility is added to this program input output is nothing but a interrupt driven input output. So in this method an interrupt facility and an interrupt command is used to inform the device about the start and the end of the transfer. So an interrupt facility and interrupt command is used to the inform that the device about the start and end of the transfer. In the meantime CPU executed other program. This is the difference, main difference between the program I.O. and the uh, interrupt driven I.O. In the previous case, program I.O. CPU is busy for monitoring the entire program or data transfer. Here, the CPU is busy to execute the other program. That means it is not monitoring the input output operations. When the interface determines that device is ready for data transfer, it generates an interrupt request. That means it is ready for data transfer and send it to the CPU or the computer. When the CPU receives the signals, it temporarily stops the execution. So after receiving the interrupt signal, then CPU stops the programs and branches to a service program to process the input output transfer as interrupt service subroutine. After completing its turn back to the task but it was originally performing. So here is the flowchart of interrupt driven input output. Here you can see is the same as the as before we have discussed in program input output here CPU read issue command to the input output device and do something else this is the new so after read issue command CPU is continuously executing the and other instruction that means here a context switching occurs so when the uh, peripheral device is ready for data transfer that means it is ready to transfer then the device make a interrupt to the CPU okay is the interrupt and a read status of IO module and CPU check the read status from the IO module that means a status is sent from the IO to the CPU and along with an interrupt then the CPU check the status if the status is ready then is read work from the input output module 
So CPU read the word from the unplugged module and next store into the memory. This part is same as the previous. Here you can notice that there is no not ready signals. Why? Because when the peripheral device is ready, only then the device can send an interrupt signal. That means there is no need to not ready here. There is no need to not, not ready signals here. So this is how the interrupt driven works. So there are few drawbacks of interrupt driven also. The processor must suspend the work and up later resume it. The second one is if there are many devices each can issue an interrupt and the processor must able to attend the each of these based on some priority so when we have more than one device and everyone is issue an interrupt then the processor have to decide that based on the priority and the third one it is not very efficient technique especially when the data we need to transfer in very large quantity so it is not applicable for it is not efficient for the large quantity data transfer large amount of data transfer the large amount of our data transfer happen in dma that means direct memory access which we will discuss in the next video thank you for watching this video thank you